That's why he's saying here, like later, they're fi fighting, they order to fight whoever uh, withhold the zakat. It's a duty of Islam. You have to obey, otherwise we will kill you. Even if you convert to Islam, you don't pay zakat, money is very important. We will kill you. The Muslim, they will say to you, this is tax, this is false. This is false. Because a big portion of this money go to the, to the Prophet. Uh, uh, this is why you see the Khalifa in Islam in his history. He had 10,000 women slaves. Like one of the Khalifa, Harun Rashid, he had 10,000 women slaves in one palace. How he can afford it? All from his salary. <laughs> from the zakat, no? Yeah. So, let us continue with the video. So zakat definitely is humbling. Absolutely, because now you have to pay the tax. But remember, if you have to pay the tax of uh, jizya, then Muslim also has to pay the, uh, the zakat tax, and there's no running away from it. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim one day and, and become a, you know, a, a Christian and say, hey, you know what, I can't pay the zakat anymore. Wait, so he will try to convince you now that when the Christian they pay the jizya, this is tax. Let us show you that this is nothing but a lie. <clears throat> If the zakat is tax and the jizya is tax, so why you call it zakat for Muslims and jizya for Christians? It should be the same name. Correct? Like do we have do, do we have a, a, a special word for non-Christians in USA or in Canada when they pay tax? Like do the Muslims in USA file jizya and the Christians they file zakat? You see the hypocrisy. If you go to the word, if you go to the interpretation of the verse, you will see the following. This is the Muslim website, as you see in the front of your eyes, and this is Ibn Kathir uh, interpretation, which is not accurate, by the way, in, Eng in the English. Uh -uh. The English translation of Ibn Kathir is nothing but a diet. It's a very tiny uh, book compared to the actual books, because the Muslim they decide to take everything will make Islam look ugly. However, after all the try, still Ibn Kathir exposing Islam. If you read with me here, it says that you have to fight, fight those who don't believe in Allah. Like this guy, he said, those people, they lost with you in the fight, right? But if you read with me, you will see it says that fight those who believe uh, uh, not in Islam. And because they, because they don't believe in Islam, this is verse number 29, 28 now. Uh, in the verse number 29, fight against those who believe not in Islam. So what the Muslim says, well, Islam, you know, if you go in war with Islam, we will fight you. But they will not tell you that it is Islam is the one going in war with you. It's not the opposite. The Quran is saying clearly, fight those who don't believe <coughs> in Allah or the last day or forbid what is etc. This is exactly the same as the hadith we quote for you Muhammad he said I've been ordered to fight all mankind until they, they say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Abdul and then if they pay zakat and do the salat and then and only then we will not kill them. It's exactly the same but this is now a verse in the Quran. Now those <coughs> who Muslim defied them from the people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews specifically. All right? You fight them because they did not acknowledge the religion of the truth. Among those people who are the Christians. So the Christian refused to acknowledge the book of the truth, which is Islam, supposedly. So you fight them, which means you kill them. Or if they agree to pay jizya, we will not kill them. And the jizya have to be paid with the humiliation and subdued. Now he said to us, <clears throat> oh, you have to be humble. This isn't about being humble. What humble? What humble? Let us read the interpretation and see together how Muslims lie about their Quran. We flip the page and we will see the following. As you read with me. Look what the, <clears throat> what the real definition of being subdued 
and paying jizya is in Islam. Order to fight people of the scripture until they give the jizya or they convert. <clears throat> All right? So either you convert or you pay. So who is the one who is doing the aggression? It's not the people of the book, which means the Christian, the Jews, is attacking Muhammad saying to him, either you convert or you pay, it is the Muslim doing the opposite. Right? It's the Muslims saying you either you convert or we'll kill you. If we go down, you will see here it's saying <coughs> paying the jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace, which means when you pay jizya, it means you must be a kafir, filthy, and you should be disgraced. And why they are paying jizya? This is a penalty. In Arabic, the word jizya is coming from the word jaza, which means penalty. Until uh, either you convert, or then you will not pay jizya. So, until they pay the jizya. So you fight them until they pay. If they pay, we will not kill you. And by the way, this is a choice, <coughs> which means if you pay before we launch war against you, then we can, uh, we can accept the jizya as a solution. But if the leader, he insists, let us kill them all, it's up to him. Like uh, uh, ISIS, sometimes they say, uh, let us force them to pay the jizya when they want, and uh, if, if they need money, if they have too much money, they say, kill them. And why they are paying? Because they refuse to embrace Islam, as you see. So this is not a tax, as he said. Why you want to pay the special tax for refusing to embrace Islam? That's very funny and very stupid. So it's a lie. Then he explained to us what it means to be subdued with willing submission. This is for translation, by the way. And yet in Waham Sagirun, it's you, like you have no choice to, to pay or not, but you have to come like a puppy. That's why it says here, and feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dimma, which means the Christians, Dimma here, Christians and Jews or elevate them above Muslims. So this is not only about paying money to the Muslims. This is about being not even a citizen. You are no one. You are like a slave. Nobody is allowed to respect you. If a Muslim he did not humiliate you, he would be humiliated himself. If a Muslim did not treat you with dis disgrace and disrespect, he is not a Muslim. A Muslim cannot elevate them ab above the Muslims. For you are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. And this is what Muhammad said. Look. Muhammad, he said, remember, this is Muhammad saying, huh? and not me. All right? Read with me. Abu Hurairah reported that the Prophet said, who said that? The Prophet. Don't initiate salam to the Jewish and the Christians. And if you force, if you meet them in the, in the narrow alley, or in the street, force them to the most narrow alley, which means, in the old days, they used to have an open sewage. Open sewage in the side of the street. Where the dirty water run. So, if you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, first, you are not allowed to say to him, hello, or peace, or hi. And instead, you have to humiliate him, and you have to force him to jump in the sewage. This is not about tax. This is about humiliation, so you can force them to convert to Islam. And this is what happened. When they occupy Egypt, the number of Muslims who came to Egypt is very little. But in a very fast time, they were able to force people to convert to Islam, because who want to live like this? Just because you are a Christian, they force you to go in the, in the sewage. So the ones who stayed as a Christians is the one who would have a very strong faith. The lousy one, they decide to convert to Islam to avoid this humiliation. And you can see here, this is why Umar al-Khattar put those conditions on the Christians when he occupied Jerusalem. You can go and read the treaty of Umar and see how filthy it is. The army of Muslims, they surround Jerusalem, and then the Christians, they have no choice except to accept the conditions which is paying the jizya. And not only jizya, he said to them, even you don't, you have to shave your hair, you have to carry a certain kind of weight in you, you have to wear certain clothes, you have to be humiliated. A Muslim man, he can sleep in your house three days and three, three nights, any time he wants. Imagine, a Muslim can come to your door 
and he knock at your door. You have to open right away. And he can sit in your house, sleep and eat and maybe fornicate with your wife for three days, three nights, and you have no right to say no. That is Islam. Let us go to the last lie this guy he have in this video. I've changed my religion, which kind of relates to the, to the idea of apostasy. You know, why this, this rule was originally there. But there are many, many scholars about apostasy, the scholarly views about apostasy. And of course, there's a lot of difference of opinion on it. We have traditional scholars that are saying that, uh, like Sufyana Sauri, like Ibn Taymiyyah, like Surahsi of, uh, yeah, of uh, the uh, Hunafa, the Ahnaf of the school of Banu Hanifa, that are saying that, you know, this was never meant to be. The, the punishment of death for apostasy was never there. You know, I challenge this liar to show me where he got this from. Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, it's never been meant to be about apostasy, to be killed. Let us go and seek some reference and see how we can expose this liar. This is uh, islamweb.net, and this is a fatwa, and the fatwa number is 73924. Those who speak Arabic, they can see why it says, they are saying right away, yes, it's, it's proven that the Prophet said that there's no man can be killed or should be killed if he's a Muslim unless adultery, a marriage for, a, like a, 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 an adulterer he's married, and killing for killing, and the one who took, who, who, who left Islam. And they are confirming that. And not only that, they are saying that Ibn Taymiyyah, he confirmed that too. Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, uh, some they say you have to give him three days before you kill him. All right? To give him a chance to re repent and come back to Islam. Ibn Taymiyyah saying, we should not make it three days as long we hope that he might come back so like we take him, we jail him, and we if if if, if we need for time for for days, five days, maybe you know, but should not be just three days. If he convert, if he accept Islam, then we will not kill him. But if he don't, then we have to kill him. And he's saying, this guy he said, according to the majority of Muslims, here we go. It says, according to the majority of Muslims, anyone who leave Islam, he have to be killed. And this is included in Taymiyyah. The one he, he mentioned. All right. Now, I found a different website in English. All right. This one is in English, so you guys you can understand perfectly what it says. <laughs> Here is the question. You can read it, and the answer is very clear. That yes, according to Islam, anyone who leave Islam, the punishment should be, uh, should be killed, all right? Uh, even Allah, he said it clearly, the rule of the Muslims, that an honor, that the one who leave Islam, or the others who are not Muslims, they should be humiliated because, uh, of, uh, because of it, ref for refusing to embrace Islam. So Allah will, uh, 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 he's encouraged the Muslim to go and fight because he want to give them the upper hand over the enemies who they are not they are enemies just because they refuse Islam and because of they are refusing Islam we will humiliate them and we will make them uh, uh, you know uh, like our slaves 